Today, we're gonna look at one of the most inspirational, life-changing I am statements Jesus ever made. Hi, my name is Rick, and I'm so glad that you're tuned in today. Before we do that, however, did you know that you can make a difference in someone's life by sharing these messages with them? In fact, we get emails from people all the time that say, my friend shared this with me and it really helped me. Thank you very much. Just by clicking the share button below, you can do that. Also, if you want to get the latest information and resources from Hope, just click the subscribe button as well. Now, watch this. Did you know that Jesus made seven amazing statements about who he was? And they're found in the book of John. One that sticks out to me is the one in which he said, I am the light of the world. Do you know that what the brightest light on the planet is? It's, it's found in Las Vegas at the Luxor Hotel. It's called the Sky Beam. It's so bright that it is visible from, by aircraft 275 miles, and pilots actually use it as a navigational tool. According to National Geographic, the sky beam is strong enough to read a book by 10 miles out in space. Now that's bright, but a few years ago, scientists at the University of Nebraska created a laser beam that is a billion times brighter than the sun. Guess what? Do you know who created the sun? In fact, who created the light? See, Jesus makes that incredible I am statement in John chapter 8, where he says, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But he also says, look at what it says in that verse. Whoever follows me will what? Will never walk in darkness. But what will they have? We will have the light of life. See, if you follow Jesus, you will never walk in darkness, which is a good thing because darkness can be scary, right? Uh, were you ever afraid of the dark as a kid? I know I was. In fact, I started, I didn't start out that way. I remember where it all started, however. I was eight years old. My mom and dad had went out to dinner and they left my brother to babysit me. But big mistake for him and for me, because when it got dark, he said I was gonna, he was gonna go downtown or go down the street to the grocery store and get us a Coke. I said, no, 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 mom said you need to watch me. He said, quit being a baby, you'll be okay. When he walked out the front door, he went around to the back door and was making a big noise like someone was breaking into the house. I got really scared and went into my bedroom and shut the door. The noise got louder and louder and then I saw the door handle to the door that I, of the bedroom that I was in was starting to move. He pushes the door open and yells. All of a sudden he froze. He froze because he was looking down the barrel of a nine millimeter German Luger that my grandfather had given me uh, that he got in World War II. He started to panic and started to apologize for scaring me. He said, put the gun down, Ricky. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to the store with me. I said, you ever gonna scare me again? He said, never. I put the gun down and told him that it wasn't loaded. Then he beat the you know what out of me. And, and after that, I was always scared of the dark. See, Jesus contrasted light and darkness when he said to Paul, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from power of, this, uh, power of, of Satan to God. You, you've probably heard that that statement Jesus made, I am the light of the world. It's not a new one, but do you know the context in which he gave it? That statement came after one of the greatest grace-filled stories in all of the Bible. It shows us three perspectives that can change how you see yourself and how you see others. The first perspective is <clears throat> the law reveals my guilt. See, this story opens up in John 8, and it says this, At dawn, Jesus appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. You know this story probably. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Now that's humiliating, right? It, 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 they went on to say, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. Now, what do you say, Jesus? They were using this question as a trap to have a basis for accusing him. Now, there's a, a lot going on here socially, economically, as well as spiritually. For example, did you notice who's missing in this story the, of who they pulled out there and dragged out there? 
where's the guy? I mean, they didn't pull him out that she was with. That's a little bit of a double standard, don't you think? See, they dragged her out, but let him go. The point of any law is to reveal those who are guilty. You break the law, you pay the consequences. You speed, cop pulls you over, you pay the fine. You steal and get caught, you go to jail. The law, for the most part, is black and white. See, they dragged this woman, probably half naked, out in the square. How humil humiliating would that have been? Yes, she was guilty. Yes, she was wrong. Without a doubt, this was the darkest, most shame-filled, humiliating moment of her life. And as Jesus said, or as they said, should we stone her? Because that's what the law says. What do you say, Jesus? See, think about that. <clears throat> they put Jesus on the spot. Now, the second perspective is the love reveals his grace. It says, but Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let anyone who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Now, let's just personalize this for a second. Let's say we're there and, and you're looking and Jesus is bending down. What would you do if Jesus started to write one of the times in which you broke the law, a time maybe in which you lied or cheated or thought a lustful thought or took the Lord's name in vain? What would you do? Well, you'd probably do what they did. It says, again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Then it says Jesus straightened up and he asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. See, this woman probably felt, I've never had a man protect me like this. I've never had anyone stick up for me when I was clearly in the wrong. I've never felt this kind of love before. This kind of love Jesus gives reveals a grace that helps us to feel accepted and protected. It goes on to say, Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Notice he doesn't say, go and try not to sin again. He wasn't letting her off the hook. He was helping her to see her potential to experience a better life, one where she can feel whole without a man, without breaking the law, without having to feel shame anymore. Now, the third and final perspective of this story is we see the light reveals my hope. See, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Now, here's this statement. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Check this out. When Jesus looked at her and said, neither do I condemn you, at that moment, he was no longer the light of the world. He became the light of her world. And in the same way, when you personalize this message, he is no longer the light of the world. But at that moment, he becomes the light of your world. And when he becomes the light of your world, that changes everything because darkness never defeats light. You will see things differently. You will have clarity when others are lost and confused. The light of Jesus is a game changer for us. Micah said, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. The amazing truth about this story is that Jesus wants to be the light of my world. Now, here's the takeaway. The law reveals our guilt. We are all guilty, and until we see ourselves as sinners, we won't see ourselves as someone who needs a savior. His love reveals God's grace, and his light reveals our hope, and Jesus is the light of the world. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this message, this truth, and how it can affect our life, and how when we live our life with your light, it makes sense. Thank you for shedding light on this story today, and may you help us, guide us in our life today as well. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now watch this. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice to the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom Savior He's a prison shaker Savior If you got change He's a change
Thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you'd like to partner with us and spread hope around the world, you can donate a couple of different ways, either online at hopepd.org, or you can text to give at 84321, or you can mail it to Hope Palm Desert 45900, Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. Thanks again for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week, either online or on campus.